Thank you. Mark Thank you. Lee has been talking with and listening to some of the music of Stace, a New York City musician. Stace will stay with us until 6.30. At 6.30, stay tuned. We will bring you feature story news from Washington, D.C. Stace, how are you doing? Hey. I'm here. How, how old are you? Take a guess. I'm actually I'm You're a 23. I'm, I'm gonna take it. Today I'm 23. <laughs> What's the truth? Today I'm 23. And we're gonna keep the truth. That is true for today. <laughs> today you know, we gotta keep people say guessing. It's the truth. We gotta yeah. keep people guessing. So the reason I asked your age mm -hmm. is okay, so it's, it's time for us to go on the air and like someone of your younger generation. Okay. You're looking down at one of those reflectors. You know, the, that's what our Cape Fire told us. They really are. They're just reflectors. reflectors. Yeah. Not, not a phone, but. But you are a master, I tell you. Of uh, I've got to tell the audience here that uh, this guy Stace, this musician from New York City who does rap and a lot of other kinds of music. I was listening to some of your stuff, and uh, I'll get back to that in a moment. But boy, I'm really impressed by the way you use social media and the internet and that sort of thing to, to promote yourself. This morning, I had breakfast at the Waffle Shop. Okay. Not the Waffle Shop. The waffle, waffle House. House. Waffle House. Okay. So you know about Waffle House, right? I do. It's mostly in the South. I do. In New York, we have uh, yeah. diners that are. Well, no, you know, yeah. So, but I the travel the a lot. The Empire Diner, the Empire Diner, yeah. I think on Twenty Third Street is one of my favorite places to go. Uh, yeah, you got a lot of individually owned diners and so on. But okay, I was at I was in the Waffle House right, this this morning, and and I go to the jukebox that right. they have there, and I look for Stace, and I can't find Stace. So now, what are we going to do to correct? This cosmic injustice. First of all, uh, I think I need my own jukebox, uh, so I have to talk to Waffle House about that. But that, that's a process. I mean, uh, one day, one day I will be there. Just one day? I, one day. One day soon. You can do it for more than one day. I'll, right? I'll, I'll be there soon to, uh, yeah. to be in that Waffle House jukebox. That's yes. a dream. Uh -huh. So you've been talking with Mark Lee. Of course. Uh, you're here in town. Are you going to be performing locally? Right now it's the promo tour. So oh, all, okay. all I want to okay. do is oh, wow. I literally came out to meet you, okay. to meet Mark and to shake hands. Right. And, Wonderful. And just, yeah, just start the relationship. I don't want to just come in and hit the stage and yeah. you guys never see me again. I just want to talk. And you know, just in this same block of buildings here, we've got Cat's Cradle. You know about Cat's Cradle. He, Mark was t uh, telling me about yeah, that. Exactly. He was also telling me about you guys had uh, some... Uh, major festival or something. Where oh, like we have lots bands. of major yeah. music. We have the Carver Music Festival. Yeah, yeah, the older. Yeah. We, but uh, you know, it really took me actually a while to realize it. But Cat's Cradle is a major East Coast venue for music. Really? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I mean, I remember back in the day when uh, this band called REM was coming through <laughs> yeah. Cat's Cradle. I first saw Living Color one night when I walked into Cat's Cradle. I walked in the light. There were a couple of guys up on stage singing about the sun. Wow. Uh, they, they might be giants. First time I ever saw them or heard them. Really? So a lot of important performances. I had no idea. Yeah, Cat's Cradle is absolutely legendary. you got to right. check it out. It's just right down the uh, short walk here. Well, Main this Street. Cluster. No, it's right here. It's in this cluster building. Right here in this parking lot. Okay, got, got you. Right here with WCOM LP. So, okay, Stace. Yes. Um, what's the difference between rap and hip hop. I'm glad you yes. asked that question. Um, because I don't know. Because, you know, I remember Richard Pryor, mm -hmm. one of my favorites. Right. He would do this really great sort of satirical uh, impression of a white guy. Right. And he'd say, well, I'll meet you later at the tennis club. And that sort of thing. So, right. as far as this goes, like, what's the difference between rap and hip hop? So, I don't know. That, you know what, that, first of all, that is not an ignorant question. And I, I really tell people that they should ask those questions. Uh, rap is, is very simply rhyming. It's just making, you know, cat, hat, bat, there. You just said a rap. You are. I, well, you said it. But yeah, okay. but you are now a rapper. Really? Yeah. I, just by saying cat. Just, just by cat. rhyming words. Right. That, that makes you a rapper. That's how easy. That, that is easy. It's, it's a little too easy. Okay, yeah. Dr. Seuss was a rapper. Yeah. You know? Uh -huh. uh, but hip-hop goes deeper. Hip-hop actually has uh, genres, or it has, uh, I'm sorry, categories uh, that make up hip-hop, and that's breakdancing, uh, graffiti, uh, DJing, and MCing. Yep. Those are platforms that are used to mm -hmm. spread a social message. Okay. So hip-hop goes deeper than just rhyming right. words. But well, what's musically different about rap and hip-hop? 
Nothing. Nothing. That's the easiest way for me to explain that. Now, okay. the musician in me would beg to differ. All right. Okay, because hip hop, the music itself is supposed to tell a story without me even saying words, without me even, you know, doing the chorus or the verse or anything like that. The music itself is supposed to speak. Rap, yeah. the music behind that, uh, you're just talking about a basic beat yes. that loops. Right. And like I said, the musician in me, there's a difference between rap and hip hop. There's right. a difference between a beat and music. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? But we could sit up here and go, you know, hours. Well, let's do it. No, we can. We yeah. Can only but that, that's the simple okay. answer. That's my So, choice. how long have you been here in Chapel Hill Carver? Just today? Yeah, yeah just today. Okay. I, the, you know, past couple of days. Uh, and I, hopefully I can stay through the weekend. Okay. Just go around. I just, I like to go to each city and just see what's around. So, around here, I have to tell you these days, there are a lot of really oversensitive, guilt ridden white girls. Mm -hmm. A lot of people around here. You know, when I tell them that I don't like rap, I, I tell them, neither do I. I, I, tell, I, I tell them rap is crap. Right. So they call me racist. That's and incorrect. Say, That's ridiculous, right. right? So, okay, I love Ella Fitzgerald, and I love Louis Armstrong, right. and I love all kinds of, but I just don't like rap. Now, you're arguably a rapper, but you say you agree with me that rap is crap? Yeah. Well, you're well, saying most of it is bad? See, the, the thing is, and, and this is something the general public, when they hear my music, they're just going to throw me in the rap category because they don't know any better. They don't know the difference. You know, that's just like, um, oh, that's just like somebody seeing a, a person yeah. of color. Yeah. Oh, you're black. Right. Okay. That doesn't mean you know you could be uh, from different parts of Africa. Yeah. You could be from. Th there's so many things that go into, but we just throw it in one category. Right. So uh, here's a black person can't be an architect. Yeah. No. No. You. You must fix cars for a living. Uh -huh. you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That, but it's like that. So in the same way, you feel pigeonholed in music, being called a rapper. Yeah, they, they do that. And, okay. and and you you and in fact, you mentioned to me before we went on the air that I should introduce you uh, as a New York City musician, yeah, musician. not as a rapper. And I was listening to one of your um, one of your tracks earlier mm -hmm. called "Get High," right? Where you shamelessly promote getting high on marijuana. Yeah. Right. Good for you. And um, I noticed that this was not the typical kind of rap that I've listened to and, and have been turned off by. Because you know, when I've heard some rap, and I know that I probably have not heard the best of it, right. I just hear this incessant kind of uncreative beat. Mm -hmm. And these sometimes uh, boring... And well, these rhymes that are stretches yeah. times and so forth. But I noticed that in this piece, Get High, mm -hmm. right, you have this great guitar. Oh, yeah. stuff going, a lot of stuff going on yeah. musically, so not music. just the, yeah. it's the music. So you're bringing more of a variety of music of into what you do. And, and hopefully today we can get into a, a song called A Little Bit Better. Um, and you will really hear the composition. And when I say I'm a musician, I'm, that's not just the title that I'm throwing around. I actually play instruments. I'm the one who actually played the piano and the, the bass guitar. And you know, the drums, and I made this music. Who did the lead guitar in Get High? Uh, that was a, it's a guy called, uh, called, his name is McKenzie, yeah. and yeah. he's actually part of my band. Tremendous. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was really yeah. great stuff. Yeah. So, all right, so we should listen to this now, A Little Bit Better. A Little Bit Better. A Little Bit Better by Stace. We're going to hear that right now here on WCOM. Does it shine like you know? for you, baby.